Each year, U.S. teens experience as many as 80, 850,000 pregnancies, and youth under the age of 25 experience about 9.1 million sexually transmitted infections, or as we know them, STIs. This is an epidemic here in the United States, and it could all be helped by an effective sex education in our schools. I went to a high school that, despite state law, sailed under the radar and the requirement for a sexual education course, and therefore I had no sex high school sexual education. Luckily, my mother being a nurse, I did not need a mediocre health course. I was able to have that open dialogue here at home and at a young age. Here at Sierra, I took a human sexuality course, which is basically the best sex ed course you could ever get. Taking that course has inspired me to pursue sexual education and to spread the word about the serious problem we have in our country. There are three main education curricula employed in the United States, abstinence only, abstinence plus, and comprehensive curricula. Abstinence only and abstinence only until marriage programs are sometimes called sexual risk avoidance programs and teach abstinence as the only morally sound trajectory for teenagers. These curricula do not provide information on the use of contraception or condoms to prevent diseases, much less unattended pregnancies. Abstinence plus education includes information about contraception and condoms, but promotes abstinence until marriage. Comprehensive sex education teaches youth that sexuality is normal and healthy and it's a part of human life. This curriculum discusses abstinence as the most effective way for teens to avoid unintended preg pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases and infections, but also equips students to make their own decisions from an informed perspective. Without invoking shame, the comprehensive curriculum covers a wide variety of shame-free topics such as human development, relationships, interpersonal skills, sexual expression, sexual health, and the way society and culture influence understandings of sexuality. Research sponsored by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services found that absence-only curricula did not result in positive outcomes for the sexual health of U.S. adolescents. Since um, 1996, over one billion in state and federal funding has been uh, allocated for abstinence-only education, despite all the evidence showing that this approach is ineffective. The sex education that U.S. students receive is often not evidence-based or values-neutral. Millions of children have participated in federal funding, federally funded, excuse me, abstinence programs. But after reviewing the most commonly used curricula, the 2004 Waxman Report found that 11 out of the 13 curricula were inaccurate, containing unproven claims, subjective conclusions, or outright falsehoods regarding reproductive health, gender trials, excuse me, gender traits, and beginning of life. More than four of every 10 high schools fails to include in sex education information about the correct use of condoms. Comprehensive sex education, on the other hand, helps young people delay sexual intercourse, increases condom and contraceptive use, and reduces the number of partners. The fewer adolescents um, are learning about methods of birth control from formal sex education sources, while more are being taught about how to say no to sex without receiving birth control information. This is When teens do choose to become sexual active, this curriculum decreases the likelihood and frequency of unprotected sex. Furthermore, students who learn from a version of comprehensive sex ed that includes gay, lesbian, and transgender issues report a safer school environment with less bullying and harassment. 
As of 2015, fewer than 6% of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender students aged 13 to 21 reported that their health classes had included positive representations of LGBT-related topics. Despite all of the advantages just summarized, only 38% of U.S. high schools and 14% of middle schools teach all 19 of sexual health topics considered essential by the Centers for Disease Control. These topics include how to create and sustain healthy and respectful relationships, information on how sexually transmitted infections are spread, and tips about ways partners can communicate to prevent pregnancies or infections. As someone who went to a high school that did not provide any form of sexual curriculum, I've seen the effects of the lack of sex education. Peers look solely to each other for answers, which results in a spread of misinformation. Children develop a sense of shame in talking about sex, which translates into sex about shame, into shame about sex in general. Imagine a world where there were no shame about the, this extremely human part of every single one of us. It's as natural as it can be. We would see the rates of teen pregnancies and STDs go down drastically. People would develop healthier relationships, sexually, sexually and otherwise. Education and awareness and open dialogue will prepare students for life and guide them towards a healthy one. We have a voice in our education. Bills are written every day to change how we enrich our society, sometimes for the better and other times not so much. Participate in signing petition, petitions and voting on propositions towards a stronger sexual education system in our middle and high schools. There are peer-to-peer -peer education programs where teachers and therapists open an online dialogue for anyone with questions or expertise or experience that they'd love to share. I'll share with you all the links to these links so that you can access these um, acts towards progress. Be the educator, but first educate yourself. Make it known that our country is suffering from the lack of awareness and spread the word. Sexual education is so important in the development of our lives and can prevent so many things. We as a society need to promote education, enlightenment, and health. And it can start with sex education. Sex is a human experience and it's nothing to be censored or shamed. I know so many people who wished that they had the floor to ask questions or that someone had told them certain things that would have prevented needless shame or distress or even life-changing life happenings. Do you?